All of the objects you're seeing right now required no modeling at all. They are 100% procedural and created using the AnyCup node. So yeah, I made a procedural generator for cups, jugs, pots, vases, basically anything that has that shape. It outputs one seamless mesh and also has support for handles. I'm gonna show you what the generator is capable of uh, and also how to make your own custom presets. To clarify, it's a paid generator for Blender, costs a couple bucks and you can find it in the description below. And you wanna go ahead and navigate to the blend file you've just downloaded. I'm gonna open it right here. And here we're greeted with a collection of objects. Uh, and if we check them out and go into the geometry notes tab that's right here, you will see that they all have the same AnyCup geometry notes group. If I go into render view, we'll see that the objects are all very different. So we have a teacup right here. Um, we have a vase that's like twisted like that. We can see better when we go to the viewport shading mode. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and we have a slanted vase like this. Uh, and even something like a wine glass. So you can already see the variety of results you can get using this node. To make it a little easier, I'm just gonna select the beer mug, which is actually the standard preset. And I'm gonna select view and go to local view. I also wanna go into viewport shading and just turn on the wireframe. Uh, this is so we can get an idea of the topology. It's not necessary for rendering, but it's to show you what is exactly being generated. Now we can go over to the right to our modifier tab, which is right here. Let's pull it out a little bit. Uh, and here we see our AnyCup geometry nodes group. And you'll see a bunch of parameters that we can use. It might seem a little overwhelming, uh, but you'll get used to it very easily because it's all very intuitive. And the most basic controls are up here, which control the diameter and the height. Let me just lower the secondary subdivision here so we get a little less lag, just like that. Uh, and let's see what kind of parameters we can play with. Now, aside from the diameter, uh, we can also change the top radius, which will only enlarge the top of the model. And this top radius is a very important parameter we will get back to later. Now we have a rim and a handle turned on at the moment, but we can actually turn them off using these two buttons right here. So with two button presses, we've gone from a beer mug to a regular cup, it's that easy. Now here you can also specify the material. Uh, the full version also comes with 10 procedural materials you can use for this object. You can also customize the handle and the rim. We will get to that later, uh, but I'm gonna turn it off for a second and go down to these two parameters, the square top and square bottom, because they are very interesting. So it does pretty much what the name says. If you increase this, uh, the shape becomes more square, just like that. Uh, and if we up both of them, just like that. Let's see what a good shape could be. Yeah, you get a square cup. Now we might need some extra subdivision. Uh, of course, we have a subdivision on the base up here. Uh, and we also have a secondary subdivision down here. I will explain a little bit more about what the difference is between the base and the secondary one. Uh, but let's see how it looks when we up the secondary one. Yeah, it's just a very good shape. If you wanna go back to the default value, you can just hover over the field and press backspace, uh, and that will bring it back to the original value that it was at the start. So it will give you back the beer mug, basically. So we've covered the base parameters. Let's go down to the secondary parameters. The first obviously being the secondary subdivision of our shape. I'm gonna bring it back to one. Uh, and here we see custom shape presets. If we cycle through these presets, nothing happens. And that has to do with this top radius over here because it works together with this parameter. Again, we will talk about creating your own custom presets, but let's just set this to two. Uh, the default is one, but I'm gonna set it to two. I'm gonna turn off the handle for a second and increase the top radius. Yeah, so now we see that we get a very different shape. This looks more like a pot or a jug. Uh, looks a little wide, so let's decrease the diameter here. And now it looks a little more natural. Uh, and we can even add back in the handle. Uh, we might have to change it a little bit. Uh, we will get back to that later. I'm um, gonna turn it off for now, but let's just cycle through the different presets that we have right now. So this is number two. We can go back to number one, which is just a straight line like that. Um, number two, which is the jug or pot kind of shape, kind of like a Zelda pot. Um, let's go to number three which is more like this ball. Uh, you can also increase it like that. It looks even more like a ball. Um, number four, 
which is, ooh, yeah. So let's bring down the top radius a bit maybe and the diameter as well. And you'll see what kind of shape this is. Now let's go to number five, which is the final preset included in both of the versions. And looks a little scuffed right now. Maybe decrease the top radius. Um, I don't like the rim on this one, so I'm gonna remove it and make it a little thinner. And yeah, you have a bottom rim as well, uh, which doesn't work on this uh, custom shape. Uh, and you can just decrease these two to zero. Um, and just like that, the bottom rim is gone as well. Now I'm gonna reset this back to the beer mug for a second by just backspacing everything. Just like that, we're back with the beer mug. Um, and let's look at the other parameters. Uh, we can change the top rim, make it bigger, make it wider. We can also change the bottom rim over here uh, and make it thicker or thinner and even make it higher or lower. And the final parameters right here are some deformations. So the twists. Uh, so instead of this one, I'm going to look at uh, this phase, which is more interesting because it uses the deformations in a very fun way. If we go down here, uh, we can see how the twist works. So if we bring this down to zero, it will just be like that. And we can just twist it around itself to create some really cool shapes. Yeah, you could even make it really bonkers and go to like 360 degrees. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, you can make some very interesting shapes. And this is actually combined with the other D4 modifier. Um, so let's just bring the twist back down to zero so we can see what's going on because you'll also see that it's kind of wavy like that. Uh, so the very first is the frequency. Um, this is just a float number and you will see that um, it gets more ripples as you increase this. Uh, and they kind of just appear on the left side here. And you wanna just by hand see when it lines up. I think that's pretty good. Maybe something like that. Yeah, I like that. And then with the intensity, you can of course make it more or less intense. And then you can even make it more intense at the top or at the bottom. The last parameters cover the handle. Um, so I'm gonna go back to our previous shape, which is the beer mug. Uh, let's just isolate that again. Now the handles, they use some of the new features in Blender 3.5 um, and you can change some things about them. So first of all is the width. And the width goes in steps, unfortunately. It's not a smooth parameter. So if you really want more step sizes, you wanna go up here uh, and just increase the base subdivision level. Now you can choose how much the handle juts out, um, how big the inner portion is. Uh, and you can also change the thickness right here, uh, which is the thickness right here. Yeah, which is also in step sizes. Then we have the two height values right here, uh, which is very simple. The top height just moves the top part of the handle and then the bottom one moves the bottom part of the handle. And then we have the final parameters which dictate the smoothness of this handle. So just for fun, let's set all of these to zero and increase them and see how we get our shape. So this is zero. Uh, it looks very square, right? So if you look at it from the side, it's very square like that. And with these parameters, you can basically smooth out this square shape into something more rounded. Um, so if we increase this one, for instance, you can kind of see what it does, right? Uh, it kind of pinches down on the corners. Uh, and if you do too much, it pinches them down all the way. So you gotta kind of feel it out. Um, and then the second one brings the two corners together like that. Now, finally, we have this threshold value. Now, what does this do? Well, you'll see. If I increase this to one, you will see that these parts get affected. Now on zero, it's very angular right here, but if you increase this, basically the smoothness that is going on right here extends uh, over to this portion and you can increase it even more. Now, I believe the default values were like three and eight. I mean, I can just get them back by backspacing. And yeah, you can just get your custom handle like that. So we've got the parameters covered, but I wanna take a peek under the hood for a second because we're gonna make some custom shape presets. 
Now I'm just gonna turn off the handle for a moment uh, and let's pull up our geometry notes tab over here. If it's not appearing, uh, you can just go over here and click on the geometry notes editor. Uh, and here you'll see what's going on. You've got a few group notes over here, um, which are not important if you're using this. There are two things you might wanna do in this window right here. Um, the first one is this viewer node. You can use this viewer node to basically see the base shape that you're creating right here. Um, now the second thing is the custom shape presets, which are right here. Now it may look a little intimidating, but really the only thing you're gonna use uh, is these float curves right here, all of these curves. And if you have a keen eye, you might've recognized some of these float curve uh, shapes basically, because they dictate the kind of shape you're gonna get uh, with the custom shape presets. So um, this is preset number one, preset number two, remember I can set it to number two, increase the top radius. And yeah, you will see this kind of shape also right here. And yeah, you can just create these shapes so easily uh, and change them after the fact too, which is super useful. Just like that. You have a glass. It's that easy. <laughs> And yeah, you could pretty much create anything that looks remotely like this uh, using this node. And I'm very curious to see what you guys come up with. You can find it in the description. It's such a handy tool and it will save me so much time in the future. And I hope it speeds up your workflow as well. That is the AnyCup 1.0 generator. Um, I definitely want to work on this node if I have time. Uh, there are things I wanna add like double handles, uh, pouring spouts, uh, also just more options for handles in general. Stay tuned for that. If you wanna see that, definitely subscribe because then you get updated on future videos. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.